Okay, so we've just uh, looked at capital gains. That's the video before this one. So now we're going to look at what happens if you don't make a profit. So what happens if you make a, uh, an investment decision that doesn't pay off? This is called a capital loss. Okay, a capital loss is when you actually lose money. That's why it's called a loss. So it's not a good thing to do, but it does happen. So what happens with us? If you make a poor investment choice and you make a loss, then there are some things that actually help you out a little bit. You need to make a decision that if your shares are going down, do you hang on to them a bit longer or do you wait for them to bounce back up again? And as we've talked about in class and you've seen from my brilliant uh, share investment uh, advice is that most of my ones have gone down. So therefore, we need to think about what do you do? Do you get rid of them and jump out before the ship sinks completely or do you hang on? And that's a decision that you have to make. But if you get to that place where you think, okay, I'm just going to get rid of them and get out of it, what can, what can you do to actually soften that blow? Well, when you sell them for less than you bought them for, it's a loss. So it's called a capital loss, like a capital gains when you make a profit. So what you can do is you can use your loss to offset any profits that you make. Okay, that might sound a bit funny, but that helps you reduce your capital gain tax that you have to pay. So if you make a profit on some of your shares, but you make a loss on some of your shares, you can take away that loss from your profit and reduce how much tax you pay. And that kind of makes sense. If you make a $1,000 profit on one lot of shares and make a $200 loss on another lot of shares, really you've only made 800 bucks all up. So why should you be paying tax on the full thousand? So that's, that's how it works. So you can offset any gain with a loss. And then if you've got that discount rule and that kind of stuff, you use that afterwards on your shares. So it actually means that you can reduce the amount of tax you pay on your capital gains um, by by maximising, I suppose, the loss that you've made. Now, it's not a good investment plan to actually keep on making losses so you offset your, your losses against your gains, but hey, it's one way of um, doing that. So let's have a look. If your capital loss exceeds, if you've made loss more money than you've made in a year, you're allowed to roll that over for one more year. Okay, so if you made a huge loss and then you want to get rid of your shares, you can actually use that to reduce the amount of tax that you pay um, over a couple of years. Only two years and then it, then it disappears. So, um, it's the best way to do it is offset any of your uh, losses against the gains that you have made that don't have the discount rule applied to them. Because remembering, if they don't have the discount rule applying to them, you've got to pay tax on the whole lot. So it does get a bit confusing, but as long as you keep on following through the steps, then it actually does work out quite well. So let's have a look at an example because that's the best way to do it. You buy some AAA shares for 4,599 bucks, sell them 18 months later for $3,000. So that's a loss. Same time, you buy some BBB shares for 3,980 and sell them 18 months later for 6,234. Once again, it's a gain. Your tax rate is 34%. You need to cal calculate the tax payable. So your AAA ones make a loss, your BBB ones make a profit, and you hold both of them for over 18 months which is good because it means if you have a capital gain there, which you do for your BBB shares, you can use the discount rule on that to reduce the tax that you have to pay even further. So let's see how we go. Let's see how we work through the whole lot. Let's go to your AAA shares. Your capital gain, well, in this case it's a loss, is how much you bought them for, take away how much you sold them for. So that's 3,000 is what you bought them for, 4,599 is what you sold them for, so therefore you've made a loss of $1,500, only $1,600 there. So you don't pay any tax on that loss. Your BBB shares, you've got a capital gain of, this is what you bought them for, this is what you sold them for. No, sorry, this is what you sold them for, this is what you bought them for. So you make a $2,254 profit, which is pretty sweet, if you think. Next thing you do, you need to pay tax on BBB, but you can offset this with that one there. So you can offset your loss against that. So you've made a profit of 2254, take away your loss, so therefore your tax liability is $655. Okay, because in real life you really only made $655 profit, so that's really the only amount that you should be paying your tax on. But this is the next thing. As you've held them for more than a year, you've held them for 18 months, the discount rule applies on this value here on the 655, not on the bigger number, but on the 655, your discount rule applies to that. So that's pretty sweet. So what you do is you get your $655 divided by two. 
So that means your tax that you are liable to pay is on this amount here, the $327.50. Okay, so going through that again, you've made a profit, you've also made a loss. Take them away and that's how much your tax liability is. So $655 is your tax liability. But because you've held them for more than a year, the discount rule applies, which means that any gain you have, you can divide it by two. So $655 Divide by two gives you $327.50. So that is what you have to pay tax on. So to work out your tax payable, you've got how much you've got to pay your tax on, times by 0 0.34, which is 34%, which gives you $111.35. So out of all of that, you only have to pay $111.35 because you've been able to offset your loss against your gain, apply the discount rule, and get... Um, a reduced tax amount. Now this is good, but remember, it doesn't. It's not a good investment plan to make making losses to offset your gains and those kind of things, because in the end of the day, it's better to make a profit on your shares, and this might come from having them for a longer time, holding them for a longer period of time, and weathering out the storm. There are some. Here are some exercises which are in your PowerPoint that you've got at home. So I would work through these. They're all slightly different, but do the same kind of thing. You know, map out what's happening. Follow them through, and uh, you'll find that uh, you'll be able to work out how much tax and stuff is payable. You probably will stumble across something like this in, in your lifetime as you go through, but you will also see something like this in a test and an exam to a certain degree. Excellent.